we praise the name of the living God. I am very humbled to be given the opportunity to share the word of God with you. Um, the title of my sermon today is How to Keep Your Hope Alive. Amen. Amen. Um, we live in a dark world. The word of God tells us in Isaiah 60 that um, arise and shine. We, the believers in Christ, we need to arise and shine because our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Amen. Amen. But then he said, behold, there is darkness upon the earth, gross darkness, the people. But if our light is not shining, how will the world see? Amen. And so I came here today to tell you that, to share with you how we can keep our hope alive. Um, as Christians, I don't think that it's right that anyone should ever say that I am, I'm hopeless. Amen? Because we know that we are in Christ. And Christ is the hope of the world. Amen? And as long as we remain in him, we have hope. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Even the word tells us it doesn't matter. After all, even in death, we still have hope. Amen? Our hope is not just in this world, but even hereafter. Because to live is Christ and to die is gain. So it doesn't matter what the enemy tries to, you know, bring before you. You are, you are victorious. Amen? You are victorious. There's this minister who sang this song. Um, Satan, kill me, you have lost, leave me, spare me, you lose more. After all, I'm a sacrifice already. Amen? So it doesn't matter what he does, you're a winner. Amen? So I came here to boost your faith. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so my scripture reference, reference was 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, that in everything we give thanks unto the Lord, for this is the will of God for us all. As Christians, the moment that you decide to take a stand for Christ, trials will come. I mean, the enemy will try to poke at you. That's his job. <laughs> if he doesn't do that, he seems to be the enemy. He will poke at you at every chance he can. The Word of God tells us that he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so once you have made that decision to stand for Christ, trust me, he will come. He tested um, Jesus, and Jesus is our example, amen? So if he tested him, know that you and I are no different. <laughs> you and I are no different. He will come and poke at us. So the way that we can stand him is by abiding in the word. And when we abide in the word, our hearts will always be full of gratitude towards the Lord. And in everything, no matter the circumstance, we will be able to give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's very critical that we give thanks always because there's so many things going on in the world right now. It's very easy to lose focus on why we're here. Sometimes you hear some of the things going, I, I personally don't listen to news. Because all they try to portray is bad news. And bad news, the moment it captures you, it puts you in a state of fear. You know, a state of sadness. You almost feel hopeless. Like, what do you do? As a parent, you know, I have young children. The oldest is five. And you hear some of these crazy news going on. Someone just got up today and went to a school and then started shooting people. As a parent, what do you do in such a situation? You can't say you keep them in the house forever. I mean, I don't think there's any safe place. It doesn't matter whether you have bulletproof house or whatever it may be. There is no safe place. The only safety is in Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. The only safety is in Christ Jesus. So the way that we can keep our hope alive, you know, you pray over them, you soak them in the blood of Jesus, and you let them go. You know, and believe in the Lord that you trust, that he will watch over them. He said that he will give his angels charge over them. Amen? Amen. They will keep them up lest they dash their feet against a stone. So don't let the issues of the world keep you in fear. 
the main purpose of fear when the enemy brings that upon us is to put us, um, well, fear only lasts for a little while. But then the main objective is to bring depression in. And once he gets you hooked, he cripples you, right? Most people who've ever um, experienced depression, they feel hopeless. They feel like they have no way out. And when the Lord doesn't show us mercy, you know, some of them end up taking their lives. And it's a very sad situation. The world is, is getting darker and darker by the day. But we need to arise. Amen? We need to arise and shine our light forth. The people who are in darkness, they can't see. Amen? The God of this world, which is that old serpent, he has blinded their minds, their eyes, that they would see the light and come to it. And so the more that our light is shining, we are able to give them uh, clarity. When you go around someone or somewhere that there's so much darkness in that place, when your light is shining so bright, I mean, darkness cannot comprehend. Amen? And so they are able to see, and then they'll realize all these, wow, I thought what I was doing was good. I thought what I was doing, I thought I was sufficient in myself, but I didn't know that I needed a savior. And that is the working of Christ inside you. That light is shining forth. Amen? And when that light is so bright in you, there is nothing that can put you down. There is nothing that can put you down. There is absolutely nothing that can put you down. Amen? And so how do we, you know, develop ourselves to that point? The only way is to abide in the word. As a Christian, our premise is the word. We can't do anything outside of the word of God because we know that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. We know that our father created the universe with the word. And without the word and nothing that was made was made. Amen? Amen. Even God himself created the word by himself, which is Christ. How can we survive? <laughs> How do you think you can survive as a Christian? Without staying in the word of God. It's impossible. Hallelujah. It's impossible because at the mere, pr uh, what's it, when the enemy comes to squeeze you just a little bit, you see that, you know, you are found wanting. And we know in Proverbs 24 verse 10, I think that in the day of battle, <laughs> if you fail, that means that, you know, your strength is weak. We have to keep our strength up. And the only way is to abide in the word. Amen? Amen. So um, I wanted to read um, John uh, 15, verses 7, which says that if you abide in my word and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So we can accomplish this by reading the word of God every day, every opportunity that you can get. You read the word, the word because there's so many things going on that it wants to take all of our time. But you have to make up your mind and stay committed to reading the word of God. The word of God we know that is Christ himself. You know, the Bible has the written words, but when you meditate on it, when you brood upon it, it becomes alive in you. And that is Christ made manifest in us. Amen. And so the more that you read the word, you get to understand who your father is. You get to commune with him. You know, it's like a love relationship. You know, you and your, your husband and your wife, you know, someone that you're in a relationship with, even if it's not marriage, even regular friendships, you know. You know the things that your friends like. You know the things that they do not like. It's not possible if you haven't studied them. You know, so the more that we read the word of God, we study, we are able to study him, know who he is, what he likes, what he doesn't like. The word of God molds you, you know. Some of us, <laughs> we are no nonsense, you know. You, you can't take the least, you know, the least thing someone does, you're offended and that's it. You won't talk to them for a bit. But when you come to the word, you know that the word of God says that you forgive your neighbor. Amen. So the word of God will... Um, it will mold you to become the real you. That you that you think for me, <laughs> I have no temper. I, I can't stand this. I can't stand. That's really not you. 
You know, that's what we've grown up to. You know, our environment and things have shaped us into some of the things that we are now, our character. But when we come to the Word, that is the perfect law of God. That is where we are able to see our true nature. Amen? So staying in the Word and abiding in the Word is one way that we can keep our hope alive. You know, when the trials of this world come, we can conquer it with the Word. Hallelujah. I have this water here. It's not so full to the brim, but hopefully I can make the illustration. The Holy Spirit will help me. Say this water is so full. When I open it, um, it might, you know, a little bit might fall over. So I'm make, using this in reference to us abiding in the word till we are so full and we are overflowing with the word. When you open this up, the word is naturally coming out. You know, even your speech changes. Everything you speak, you speak life. Amen? You speak life. Wherever you find yourself, you always see the light in any situation. You know, sometimes our car breaks down and naturally for me, I go into economics, you know. Now is not the best time to get another car. Now is not the best time. We just can't afford this expense. My husband will always say, well, look at it. It's an opportunity to get a new car. <laughs> you know, he always sees... <laughs> You know, he always sees the light in any situation, no matter what. You know, when you open this water, the word, um, let's say the water is so full, it will come out naturally. And so when trials come, let's say the water in here, that is full. When I open it, that's the word of God inside you. It's full and it's overflowing. This one has space right in it. So when you open it, there's a little room in there. The enemy can come in and tempt you. You might fall for it. But when the word is so full that it's overflowing, when he comes, there's no room. Amen. Hello, I said there's no room for him. Amen. You know, when you, when you receive a visitor, you know, you are the landlord of your home. When you have a guest come over, you can accept them or decide not to let them in. That's absolutely up to you. <laughs> when the enemy comes knocking and you are so full and overflowing with the word, the word will meet them. Jesus will meet them. Hello? Jesus is the one who will meet them, and he will run in terror. Amen. The enemy is not afraid of us individually. Um, he's afraid of Christ in us. And so when we are overflowing with the word of God, when they come, they will just run. They will just run. But even with this, do you know what wonders this can do? If the word of God was filling us up to this point, do you know what? Let's say this is like 95%. Do you know what wonders we can do here on earth? Man, the rapture probably would have taken place already. If every one of us Christians were filled with the word even up to this point. Because even when sickness comes, when challenges come and knocks at your door, even with this, you can conquer them. Amen? I say that when a visitor comes to your house and you let them in, they have no room. You can make a place for them to stay, even temporarily. It doesn't matter how long they want to stay, they still have to go. It's not their place to stay. Hallelujah. And so when troubles come, you stay in the word, keep eating, soaking yourself in the word. The presence of God overflows you. That issue has no choice but to go. Because darkness and light cannot abide. Amen? Darkness and light cannot abide in the same place. Hallelujah. And so as we abide in the word of Christ, we are able to keep our hope alive. The world will tell you, keep your hopes down. You know, you don't want to feel disappointed. But we know that Christ is our hope. And so we need to elevate him the more. We need to elevate him to the whole world. Hallelujah. And that leads me to my next point, which is prayer. Prayer. Prayer is very important. It's also another means that we communicate with the Father. If he had, maybe he has things that he wants to show us, but if you don't communicate with him, he cannot communicate back to us. Amen? The word of God in Luke 18 verses 1 tells us that men ought to always pray and not to faint. We have to always pray and not to faint. Don't wait till there's an issue before you go to your father. Amen? Amen. At that point, fear is almost setting in. 
you won't even remember the scripture to go before him with. You know, it's not that, you know, when the word of God says that puts me in remembrance, it's not that the Lord is forgetful. Amen. He's all knowing. So why is he saying that put me in remembrance? It's really for us because we have the tendency to forget. So it is only to make sure that you know why you're coming to me. You know, you, you, I mean, you have studied the word and the word is coming out of you, you know. How do you pray to a God who is all-knowing, a Father who is all-knowing, knows every need you could possibly ever need? You know, you go to him and you communicate with him. You speak if there's a challenge at hand. You speak the word over yourself. Prophesy. We are all our own prophets. Prophesy over yourself. Is a sickness. He said, with long life I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Keep saying that word over yourself until you believe it. That word will flow out of you. And that is how you know you have won the battle. Amen? Amen? And even if you've done that and you truly believe you've done that and it's not working, go to him in prayers. He's our father. Amen? Amen. He is ever ready to provide. He's ever ready to provide. You know that unjust judge that God was talking about, that this widow was bothering him. Every now and then he will come. Won't you avenge me? That unjust just said, let me attend to this lady before he make, she makes me, you know, gray. Hallelujah. How much more our father? How much more our father who is in, he begot us of himself. Amen. How much more will he not answer us speedily? He wants our joy to be full. So when we go to him in prayer, whatever the situation may be, he's ever ready. He is ever ready and willing. We know that God is reliable. We know that he's trustworthy. We know that he is capable and he is able and he is willing. When you have all this information about him, there should be no space, no room for fear. Amen. Amen. So I want us to read uh, Philippians 4 verses 6 through 8. If we can put it up. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 8. Okay. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Amen? Amen. Be careful for nothing. Do not fret. Do not be anxious. Do not have anxiety over the issues of life. I'm sure every one of us once had an issue, probably felt like there was no way out. And here you are today right? Realize that it was really no issue. It was really no big deal. Amen. But when that issue is happening at that point, we feel like, man, how do I survive this? How do I survive this? But then when we are able to calm down, right? And think things through, we realize that it really, that the, the solution was there all along. But when you are frightful, sometimes you don't see clearly. So the Lord told us that we should not fear. Fear is not from God. He has given us the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. We should not be fretful, not in any situation. But with prayer and supplication, we make our request to, to him with thanksgiving. When we pray, the Lord gives us uh, answers to our prayers, you know. The purpose of anxiety is to capture us in that state of hopelessness. <clears throat> the enemy wants to deceive you. He wants to deceive you, so he brings in fear. There's no way out. Look, I know this person. Remember that friend of yours had the same issue, and look, they didn't make it. You know, and that brings fear. But you think on the things that are of good praise. You think on the things that are of virtue. You think on the things that has any praise. That's what the, the Lord is telling us. The more that you think of it, um, when someone comes to share a testimony, which glorifies God, speaks of how marvelous the Lord has been to them, 
That, what does that do to you? What does it do for you? It boosts you up, doesn't it? It uplifts you. A brother might be going through that same situation and their hope rises up. Wow, they go home and they go to search the word. Father, you did this for my sister. I know that you can do it for me. You know, but when you think on the situation, you are fixated on that issue at hand, you cannot see a way out of it. The Lord didn't tell us that there will be no issues for us because we're Christians. In fact, he told us that I came into the world, but they do not know me, so they did not accept me, right? And for my sake, you will be tried. You will go through tribulations. So he knows that the issues will come. Amen? But he made a way out for us. He said, call unto me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. So not that you won't have the trouble, but he's there with you to make a way out. Hallelujah. He's there with you to make a way out. So you go to him, you communicate with him. Father, this is what's going on. What is the way forward? How do I go about this situation? And leave it up to him. It is not for you to figure out how to solve that issue. If you knew how to do it, you wouldn't even need him in the first place. But we know that we are insufficient on our own. But in Christ, we are made complete. Amen? So we go to the Lord in prayer. We go before him, humble ourselves. Hail him. Hallowed be thy name, O Most High. You are gracious in all your ways. Father, you are the life-changing God. See how you have changed me. Amen. I know that you can do this for me. Hallelujah. Then you come out. You know, the thing with prayer is that even when you go to the Lord in prayer, and at that very instant, you haven't received a response for which you went there, there's just something. You, you don't leave the same. You don't leave the same. The Lord will bless you. You are refreshed. At least you feel at peace. You know, when you read, um, can we continue with that um, verse? Going down, go to the next verse, yes. And the peace of God, hallelujah, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your mind. Amen? Amen? The Lord always brings a message of peace, you know? Whenever there's a storm, he said, peace be. Amen? So when we go here, when it says that, you know, let's come to him with supplication and prayer. He didn't even say that our prayers are answered here in this verse. But he said that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart. Because he knows that all issues arise from the heart. You first need peace. You first need peace so that you can see the solution. Amen. So he will guard our hearts with peace. You guard our minds with peace through Christ Jesus. That way you can walk through life with ease. Amen? You fall, but you get up and move. Hallelujah. Amen. Now that leads me to my next, um, before then. Um, whilst you pray, if you have nothing to pray about, you just go to the Father and thank him. Thank him for his goodness, for his mercies. His mercies are new every morning. You just go to him and then you thank him for who he is, who he has been for you. Amen? You give him thanks. Just adore him. You know, everyone likes to go where they are appreciated. Everyone likes to go where they are celebrated. No one likes to be around someone who nags all the time. It's draining. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all like to go where we are appreciated, where we are loved. So can you imagine what the Father will be doing if you're constantly before him at his feet, showering him with blessings, I mean, just honoring him, reverencing him. He will always be around you. He will always be around you because he knows my beloved daughter, Janet, is here. I need to go and soak myself. Amen. He inhabits in the praises of his people. So he will always be around you. He will always be around you. And that presence is light. In light, darkness cannot thrive. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then Jude 20 tells us that we should build up ourselves in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. If you have that gift, you just pray in the Holy Ghost. If you don't know what to pray about, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
you pray in the spirit and the will of God is always done. Hallelujah. Now that leads me to my next and last point that I wanted to talk to us about, which is Psalms. Psalms can be praised, it can be worshipped. Whatever you feel like the Spirit is leading you to do, you do that. When you have studied the word, meditated on it, prayed, then all that. Sing psalms and hymns. Amen? Colossians, James 5.13 tells us that is any among you feeling uh, merry, let him sick. I know that it does say that is any among you afflicted, let him pray too. Amen? So that's the place for prayer. But if you are feeling merry, you pray. I mean, you, you sing. There's nothing wrong with singing. Sometimes I may be feeling down. You know, um, Isaiah 61, where Jesus was talking about um, the prophecy concerning him, that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. You know, and he has anointed me to set the captives free, to heal um, the uh, brokenhearted. I think verse 3 going there, it says, where it says, beauty for ashes, um, the, joy, um, the oil of joy for those mourning in Zion. It also says that um, oil of joy, um, praise, sorry, praise for the spirit of heaviness. So when you're feeling heavy, the weight of this life is weighing you down. If you can't sing the praise, play it and listen to it till you get in the groove. Amen. There's something about praise. You know, sometimes I'll be home. I have the kids. They're just disturbing me. I put on, my son knows that he's only five. They'll be watching something on the TV. I'm sitting in the living room, but he can see that I'm not with them. He will come to, Mommy, should I play your song, Hallelujah? I say, okay, let, let's play. <laughs> Our new favorite now is Hallelujah. <laughs> he will play it, and then we will just be dancing. We will all be dancing to it. They all know the song. You know, we'll be out going grocery shopping, and then they'll be singing gospel song that sometimes our worship or our church we, we play. And I feel so proud uh, as a mother, you know. The Lord said we should raise them in the way of the Lord so that when they grow, they will not depart from it. They don't, we don't play circular song in my home. I have no business with that. I have no taste for that. Amen. Amen. We, we only play, um, you know, gospel songs that are played song because there's so much going on, beloved. There's so much going on. Um, you don't even know when you get out the things that they want to bring into the schools and teach little children. You have to get them soaked in the word. That is their only safety. That is their only, because it will get to a point where they'll grow up and other people will influence them. Now, your influence on them may not be as strong. And so while you can, this is the stage where you can mold them. You know, we don't listen to, you know, my cousin would tell me there was one birthday that um, I had them come over. And at some point, we we're playing a regular song. And she looked at me like... <laughs> Are you playing this song? Even, you know, she was surprised because I just, I don't play any circular music. It doesn't matter what. Amen. I just don't do it. I don't really have, I used to work at a, a place, a grocery store, and then they played every song. So I, I know every song out there in the world. Sometimes I'll go to the mall, you see them playing, and I'll start humming. I was like, oh. But in my house, that's out of bounds. Amen. We try to create an environment where the Lord can thrive. Amen. So the presence of God is always there. It's so important. Imagine what happened in Chronicles, Second Chronicles 20, um, verses 20 um, and 22, 23. You know, when they began to sing, they began to sing and to praise. The Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and, and Mount Seir. Amen? When you praise the Lord all the time, singing of his praise, of his mercies, he will send ambushments to the enemy. He said he will make their ways slippery. You know, that enemy who is always looking for pits, digging pits for you when you come that you fall. He said that they will fall inside their own pit. Amen? Amen. So that's what praise can do. That's what, and praise and worship, naturally, it uplifts you. 
You know, if you're dealing with something, it, it, it wants to make, put you down. You put on a song that will uplift you. I do, this is practices that I do, and I know I have reaped the benefits of them. Amen? Amen. So you play songs that will uplift you. Songs that are based on the scriptures. Amen? Because then that song will manifest Christ to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So my message was that. Very simple and short. Amen? To keep our hopes up and alive. Don't listen to the world that keeps your hope down so that you don't get disappointed. No, we will not be disappointed. We are not of the world. We're just here traveling through. Amen. Our Savior is coming soon. He will rapture us and take us out of here. Amen. So this is only temporary. So we have hope. Our hope is not just in this world, but hereafter. So you study the word, meditate on it, and Christ will be made more alive in you. Pray to the Father always. We ought to pray always and not to cease. And then sing psalms and worship. Hallelujah. I hope that with this short exhortation, your faith has been boosted in the Lord. And if you are feeling anything, it is my prayer that the Lord will visit you at your point of need. That he will give you his peace. He will give you his peace. He will guard your heart. That is where all the issues come from. He will guard your heart and give you that boldness to step out and go and face the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you.